Hi, my name is Lima Sell. I'm here to take you over a basic carbon black uh, demo today, just to let you know, we're just gonna go over some basic features and functionality, and there's a lot more into the product that you might wanna get into at some point in time. Really at the heart of what Carbon Black does are policies, and they're very easy to create. You just click add a policy, you give it a name, and you're gonna set your enforcement level. And we talked about this earlier. <clears throat> we have three different enforcement levels, low, medium, and high. For every policy, you're gonna to wanna to start out in low enforcement. And the reason for that is that when the agent is first installed, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do an inventory of all of the executables, certificates, and files of interest on that endpoint. And that inventory is then gonna be centrally located on the Carbon Black server. Additionally, we're going to locally approve all of those files to run so that all things being equal, if we want to move into a higher enforcement, the only thing that we're going to have to worry about adding into the policy are how we're going to allow for trusted change to happen within the environment. So any new applications we might want to install or updates. Other than that, everything that's on the machine currently is going to be able to run without any further issues. When we move into a medium enforcement policy, we're going to start adding a little bit of friction. We'll have a pop-up notifier come up, um, sort of a, hey, are you sure you want to install this? And then when we move into high enforcement, we're actually not going to allow uh, the end user to install any more applications on their endpoint without any uh, approval from an administrator. So in law enforcement, we are going to allow people just uh, continue on installing uh, applications. However, we are going to be sending those events into our console uh, for use later on, and we'll use those events to get into high enforcement. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that as we go along. So with the pop-up, the notifier is basically pretty simple. You can go ahead and change this icon. You can change any of the verbiage that's in here. You can add a URL, so if you want to send something to a support desk or uh, open a ticket, you can. Uh, you can also add in a business justification for why they're wanting to approve it, uh, and then add in the, the email and that type of thing. All of this will go back into your console, into your approval requests area, so you'll be able to see what those requests are. And then from this point, you'll either be able to start uh, doing like a local approval, approving it on that machine to run. You can approve it globally for everyone to run it on their machine. Or if it's something that you actually don't want running in your environment, you can also ban it within the environment from this uh, console as well. So once you've created your policies, we are actually going to be able to create multiple policies even within the same enforcement levels for different types of machines. So for example, we have application servers in high enforcement. We also have developers in high enforcement. What we're going to do though, is we're gonna add in some software rules and this is how we're gonna differentiate access between those different types of machines. Uh, within software rules, we have some that are considered global. So like for example, updaters is a global approval and I can go in and approve things like Google, Google Chrome that might want to self-update often. However, let's say we've got legacy systems that require a certain version of Adobe Acrobat Reader to run. We may not want to approve that to be updated within the system so that we wouldn't enable that uh, updater to be allowed to run. Rapid configs are kind of a collection of our uh, custom rules. And we developed these because either we were seeing requests for this a lot and we wanted to get people into high enforcement easier without having to use professional services, or we also started to develop what we call living off the land types of protections. Um, in addition to some performance enhancement uh, types of, of configs. So in this particular case, if we look at SCCM, we can go ahead and enable this type of policy, give it a UNC path for it, 
specify what user or uh, type of access that you want to approve these files from. And then once you save this, uh, what will end up happening is anything that's going to come from your Microsoft SCCM will automatically be allowed to run. So any new executables that you want installed, any updates that you want to approve and trust are going to automatically be allowed to run. Within many environments, this can get most people about 90% of the way to uh, getting into high enforcement without having to add in a bunch of, of other policy rules. We have uh, rules, like I said, around living off the land, for example, Mimikatz. So we have applications that are allowed to run, but we want to pr further protect those from abuse from a, a malicious attackers, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to start these in a report mode. And the reason for that is that we want to make sure that we're not going to block anything in production that might mimic some of these bad behaviors. And once we do this, these events will start going into that event area that I was talking about earlier. And then from there, we can use those to look to see if there might be anything that uh, we would block potentially in, in production. And then we can make uh, allowances and exceptions for those before we move into a blocking mode. But other living off the land type pr protections that we have along with this are things like uh, PowerShell, process hollowing, and ransomware protections. So again, a great way to um, start looking at what's happening within your environment and providing further protections. Publishers are another easy way to get into a higher enforcement posture. So for example, I can allow anything that has a Microsoft Windows publisher to install or update software. Conversely, I might not want Skype running in my environment. I can ban that publisher. And then even in low enforcement, I can stop Skype from running in my environment. You can add in custom publishers as well. So for example, if you have an internal certificate that you want to use, maybe your developers are developing software. If you have that certificate on there, and approve that software that would enable that to run without any additional types of rules that you would need to put in place around trust on those executables. We talked about files of interest, right? So one of the ways that we can um, look at and allow for different script languages is to be able to create uh, scripts within here. So we can look at the uh, file extension, right? If you're looking at a script, they don't have anything in the header, for example, with uh, executables, they have the PE bit set in the header so we can easily identify them. With scripts, we're gonna have to identify them by the extension. Uh, and then we can easily do this within this area. So you can either turn them on or you can uh, simply add script rules or edit the ones that are here to include other extensions as well. In addition to file executables, we can also take a look at registry settings. Uh, one of the areas that attackers like to do is use registry uh, to be able to maintain persistence and use for some other malicious behavior. So we're able to really lock down the registry. We have the ability to either report prompt like we did with um, our medium enforcement or also block, right? So uh, in addition to blocks, we might need to do an allow ahead uh, depending upon how we're, we're locking down the environment. But we give you a very feature rich way to enable protection around your, your registry rules. Kind of a catch-all for everything else is our custom rules. And very similar to our, our registered rules, we also have file integrity rules. The nice thing about this is that along with being able to just kind of monitor uh, and report on any changes to your directories and or files, we can also block change. So, you know, potentially enabling you to get to kind of that higher security level 
without having to worry about uh, having a bunch of reports, right? We can block things before any kind of change happens within that environment. Additionally with this, we can do things like uh, look at trusted paths. So when I was talking about the application servers and the developers being in high enforcement, when we were in low enforcement with our developers, we noticed that they were uh, using these two UNC paths for their development. So we can go ahead and approve and allow this to happen within the environment, but I'm only gonna specify that the developers are able to do this. I'm not going to allow this for my application servers. So this enables me to really tailor my security around those devices and not have to allow a lot more within my environment uh, globally uh, to you know, further protect my systems. But basically anything that you pretty much wanna do, uh, we can handle a lot of different types of security through some of our custom rules. We have very uh, advanced ways of looking at and uh, allowing for change to happen within your environment. And at, as I was saying, all of these reports uh, go into this event area so that we can go in and see everything that's happening within, within this environment, whether it be uh, new systems that are, or new files that are being uh, written into the system, or we can start looking at uh, things like uh, whether a, a new unapproved file is being done. And all of this can be looked at through different types of views. So we talked about uh, using new unapproved files uh, after, um, after an inventory, right? We said that they would get tagged with a new unapproved file to computer. We can use these events by looking at the user, the file name, and the installer to start maybe creating custom rules or allowing this in different ways. And if we are looking at one particular file and we want to, we can also take action on that immediately by approving it locally, globally, uh, banning things within the environment, that sort of thing. So we do have uh, a number of different ways that we can handle uh, approving different software within the environment. We can also do things like create custom reports where we might be looking at some of our uh, file integrity information that we have um, out on our system, right? We can start looking at uh, how change is happening, you know, whether we're looking at whether it was a, a write on the file or even a block to uh, one of the rules that we created in our custom rules. We keep all of this information, right? We talked about having that file inventory so we can go in and look at different files that are seen within our environment. And the nice thing about it is, is that we can also look at prevalence. So for example, we have a number of files here that have a prevalence of zero, it means that at some point in time they were on an endpoint, but they are no longer there. If we wanna interrogate specific machines, we can come in and group that by computer and then we can start looking at the different files on individual machines as well. So we have a number of different ways of looking at those files on, uh, in our inventory. We also have an applications inventory. We can start looking at the different inventory uh, applications that we have, as well as the different versions that are out there. Uh, we can, again, look at uh, applications on specific computers as well as the CPE applications, so the common platform enumeration uh, as far as the files go. Using the common platform enumeration, we can also take a look at the different vulnerabilities that might be associated with those applications, as well as checking into what that actually means through the uh, National Vulnerability Database. So as you can see, there's a lot of feature functionality with app control and uh, we can you know, dive into any further specifics and questions that you have. 
at this point in time, but I wanna thank you for taking the time out to uh, look at app control today.